News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290 and 98.3 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. $200,000 bail for a man accused of causing the I-90 rollover crash. Good morning, everyone. Montana Morning for Tuesday, August the 8th, 2017. Right now, the sky is smoky. We have 54 degrees in Missoula. Air quality in Missoula right now is listed as moderate. In Hamilton, it's unhealthy for sensitive groups. In Superior, the air quality is listed right now at very unhealthy. And at Sealy Lake, it is listed as hazardous. Our newscast this morning, sponsored by First Montana Bank. Your home for free centennial checking, plus unlimited cash back every time you use your debit card. Our top story this morning, Missoula County Sheriff and Coroner T.J. McDermott has released the names of the two individuals who were killed on Saturday night when a Jeep rolled on Interstate 90, ejecting them. The victims were 33-year-old Vanessa Anderson and 36-year-old Donnie Barlow, both of Missoula. 42-year-old James Bayford was charged in Missoula Justice Court yesterday with two counts of felony negligent homicide and eight more counts of criminal endangerment for those who were injured. Deputy Missoula County Attorney Lacey Lincoln said Bayford was already on felony probation. Your Honor, the state is requesting $200,000 in bail as well as continuous alcohol monitoring as a condition of his release in addition to all of the conditions of his current felony probation. Uh, The reason the state is asking for that is that the defendant was just sentenced on July 25th on two counts of assault of a minor. Uh, In that case, he had assaulted his nephews while intoxicated. Lincoln then addressed the present charges. This case stems from him being highly intoxicated and causing a rollover crash of a shuttle in which he was a passenger coming back from the testicle festival by grabbing the steering wheel. Two other passengers were ejected and killed in that crash. Given his previous history with alcohol, that is why the state is requesting the full-time monitoring as well as such a high bail. Judge Anderson set bail at $200,000 and remanded Bayford back to the Missoula County Jail. Missoula police had to use their vehicles to pin in a suspected burglar Saturday morning after concerned neighbors called in to report a suspicious man trying to gain entry into a residence on 55th Street. Police spokesman Travis Welsh said the call came in just before 6 a.m. Neighbors reported seeing a male at an adjacent residence window, uh, apparently trying to make entry. As the officers arrived, uh, they encountered a couple males out in front of the residence. Uh, looked like they were talking. One of the males was sitting in a Jeep. As the officer arrived and began to approach, that Jeep left the scene. Officers soon discovered that the Jeep had been stolen from in front of a nearby residence, and then a chase ensued. The officers began to pursue the suspect in the stolen Jeep and went actually down the hill before he turned and came back up the hill, pulled into Oakhurst Court, which is off of Garland Drive between 23rd Avenue and Hillview. The officers then made contact with his vehicle, pinning it in place so that he couldn't continue to drive. Police apprehended 26-year-old Pittas Kumapi Green, who struggled against their attempts to place handcuffs on the man. Green faces eight separate charges, including three felonies for theft, burglary, and criminal endangerment. Bond was placed at $150,000. Police received a call from an active, about an active burglary that was going on Sunday afternoon from a young girl who said her mother was being assaulted. Once again, police spokesman Travis Welsh. We received a 911 call of a disturbance in the 1800 block of Sherwood Street. A 10-year-old girl had called to report that uh, her mother's ex-boyfriend had uh, broken into the house and was uh, in some kind of a disturbance with her mother. Police arrived and spoke with the mother, who confirmed the substance, substance rather, of the 911 call. She had been laying down and reported that she heard a loud noise outside of her bedroom, and then when she went out, she discovered her ex-boyfriend standing in the hallway of her residence. She demanded that he leave... Uh, He was uh, upset. He grabbed her, pushed her against the dresser, shook her up pretty good, demanded to know where some of his property was, and then left. Police found the suspect, 36-year-old Brandon Harris, a short time later arrested him for felony aggravated burglary and a misdemeanor charge for partner or family member assault. A Montana sheriff has apologized for the actions that led to a misdemeanor partner or family member assault charge being filed against him. Cascade County Sheriff Bob Edwards read a prepared statement yesterday saying he planned to return to work tomorrow and that he hoped to regain the trust and respect of his staff and the residents of the county. Edwards was arrested June 15th at a Helena hotel 
where the Montana Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association held its annual convention. Police reports said Edwards pushed a woman into a TV stand. Colorado City officials reached a deferred prosecution agreement after Edwards' girlfriend declined to testify. Edwards said he took responsibility for putting himself in a position that he should not have been in. He did not answer any questions from the media. If your home begins to smell like a campfire, it's a smell you'll likely have to get used to, according to Montana Department of Environmental Quality meteorologist Kristen Martin. The smoke in western Montana's valleys is here to stay all week long. It is not looking too good for the next week. Um, We can expect a a pretty steady uh, weather pattern over the next few days, so we're going to see morning impacts um, due to the smoke from those fires draining into the valleys at night, and then hopefully some improvement each afternoon, um, but still active fire behavior, so we may see some plumes move overhead in the afternoons as well. The smell isn't just a nuisance. Martin said the smoke actually carries some major health risks. I would say um, to expect in Sealy Lake that morning impact varying from very unhealthy to, to hazardous most mornings and clearing in the afternoons and then Missoula ranging at times from moderate to unhealthy for sensitive groups with occasional unhealthy levels in there. Yeah, unfortunately, there's there's a big ridge over the West Coast, and we're just stuck stuck in a pattern right now. Martin says the soonest we can hope to see a major change in the weather might be this weekend. Officials in southwestern Montana have identified the Idaho woman and two young cousins who were killed in a rollover crash on I-90 near Deer Lodge. The Highway Patrol said the July 28th crash killed 61-year-old Cynthia Boone of Coeur d'Alene, The crash also killed Boone's granddaughters, 12-year-old Olivia Tavares of Rexburg and 10-year-old Lexi Minish of Priest River. The patrol said Boone overcorrected after driving into the medium. The crash also injured two other children, ages 6 and 2. Some of those victims were life-flighted to St. Patrick Hospital in Missoula. A northern Wyoming man apparently shot and killed his longtime partner before turning the gun on himself. Investigators believe 74-year-old John Bright killed 64-year-old Mary Ann Byer at the home the couple shared west of Powell, Wyoming, on Monday. Lance Mathis, a spokesman for the Park County Sheriff's Office, said Bright and Byer were not married, but were in a long-term live-in relationship. The relationship had recently soured. Bright became despondent when he found out Beer was planning to leave him. The Powell Tribune reports Bright told a family member early Monday morning to come by the house saying he had left a note in his truck. The family member then called 911. Bright and Byer died at a nearby hospital. Investigators found a suicide note at the home. Our news talk time now is 612. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Smoky sunshine is expected this week with our daytime highs in the upper 80s and low 90s. Overnight lows will be in the upper 50s. As we head through the second half of the week, we add in an isolated thunder threat. A meteorologist, Brooke Foster, for Missoula's KECI 13.